I'm uh, stepping outside my comfort zone a little bit here um, to start to publish a little bit more. I'm actually out on my uh, morning walk. A little out of breath because I just went up that hill. That does not look like a hill. Trust me, in real life that looks like a hill. Like, uh, mm, yeah, it's really steep. Anyway, sorry I'm a little out of breath, but I uh, wanted to share some thoughts with you uh, this morning. Like I said, really stepping outside my comfort zone here because, um, you know, I used to be pretty comfortable in front of the camera. Um, ran a podcast or interview show with a group of uh, fine individuals a few years back. And I'm a bit out of practice. I'm rusty. But I really want to get some things out to you guys. Um, I've got a book coming out soon. And uh, it, it, the book is a little different than what you may have heard in the past. Uh, you know, if it comes to, when we talk about goal setting and achieving and trying to get somewhere in life, I have spent, I, I, I've probably been obsessed with these kind of ideas since I was about 12. So for 30 some years, uh, I've been reading, you know, self-help books and going to motivational seminars and business leadership books and uh, you know whatever I have a huge library full of these and unfortunately there's just some certain aspects that seem to get passed around because they sound so good in theory uh, they sound logical and they sound like it should be the way to achieve things but honestly it's bullshit like a lot of it's bullshit and I don't mean that it's bullshit and that the people who are teaching it are bullshitting you. I just, I think they're really sincere. I think a lot of these people, maybe these techniques work for them. Uh, and they believe what, they honestly believe what they're teaching. And, uh, you know, you can analyze really successful people and kind of break down their habits and what they do. And the reason I say it's bullshit though is that this like traditional form of goal setting, this smart goals of, uh, you know, setting a specific objective uh, on a timeline to achieve that. Um, that's, if you're the type of person that that works for, you probably don't need a motivational podcast or a book to tell you. Um, I think people who are seeking that advice aren't going to get much out of it because, uh, you know, it teaches this very external reward system, uh, sort of a, a mindset of, well, I'll be happy when, so once, once I finally achieve this or that, and I think it just sets you up to, well, first of all, be disappointed, because a lot of times we, we make those results in our head to, out to be a lot more grand than they really are, um, so yeah, I want to lose 20 pounds, and then you get down to 20 pounds, and uh, you know, this this one victory where you step on the scale and it's like, oh, that's amazing. And then the next day, you're still just you, you know, and not, not a lot has changed. Um, and you got there so gradually that you probably hardly even noticed the difference to begin with. And sometimes once that objective is achieved, it's like, well, I hit my goal. Now I can, man, now I can slack off a couple days or now I can take myself out for pizza and ice cream. And um, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. It's just... You know, this is how yo-yo dieting works, and I think that yo-yo dieting is not a matter of a lack of discipline or some character flaw. I think it's actually just the structure of setting the goal in the first fucking place. Like, we, we get so hung up on this single objective and a time frame to achieve it. Instead, uh, you know, that there are some of these techniques that are taught by these motivational gurus and such of, as far as you know, visualization and everything is very valuable. I mean, that's, there's a lot of scientific proof for visualization and how it can uh, increase your performance and uh, help you in the learning process. But the thing is, is I'm talking about internal change, not an external objective. So when you visualize something for yourself in the future, a leaner, fitter you or a more financially stable you or whatever... You know, there's a lot of valuable uh, value in in those visualization practices and in journaling and that and everything. But you know, working on who you are versus what you achieved is far more more valuable. And 
and I think that, you know, instead of being somebody who wants to lose 20 pounds by, you know, in four months or whatever, uh, maybe you should just, you know, try to visualize yourself as being the type of person who is active every day, who uh, eats reasonable proportions and, and, and uh, quality. quality foods and, you know, enjoys a healthy lifestyle day, day to day. And, uh, you know, you can have that slice of pizza. You just don't need half the pizza or, or the whole thing or whatever. And, and, um, you know, I'm, I know that as a fitness coach for the last 16 years, I know that it's just not that simple for a lot of people. There's a whole lot of uh, deep psychology going on. Uh, but my point is, is that perhaps instead of setting a goal for some objective outcome, the goal should be more oriented on who you're becoming. And uh, anyway, I just kind of wanted to throw some of these thoughts out at you. I'm sure that these will be more concise as I go and shorter. This is already six minutes. Sorry, I meant to keep this at five minutes or less. But uh, uh, this kind of brings me to a second topic. Maybe I should just make a second video of this. But the reason I'm putting this out there is uh, one of the types of people I want to become is uh, someone who spends a lot less time mindlessly scrolling through social media. Uh, every time I'm on social media for more than a few minutes, uh, basically I feel like shit. And uh, it's, it's a time suck and it's a way, it's an escapism just like TV has been for the last two generations. And I'm sure there was something else beside, before that, but you know, a lot of us tend to escape reality for moments without even realizing it and you know there's nothing wrong with downtime or social or hey, having fun you know I don't I, I don't strive to be somebody who's productive every minute of the day um, but there's a difference between uh, restorative time and just mindless time a lot of times that mindless time just I, I end I end it with regret every time so my goal here uh, besides putting out some of these ideas, letting you know about the book coming up, uh, is also to be more of a producer and less of a consumer in uh, other areas of my life besides just, you know, financially speaking. Uh, instead of consuming so much social media, um, I'm going to try to put something out a little bit more often uh, to provide value for other people. and. Um, my hope is maybe I can find some sort of ratio to shoot for as far as, uh, you know, maybe if I put out 10 minutes worth of content in the day, then I can set myself a, a 10 or 20 minute, uh, time cap on the time I spend consuming, um, in, in that particular arena, social media or whatever. So that's part of what I'm doing here. And uh, man, now I'm over eight minutes. Uh, Anyway, these will be shorter, concise, I'm thinking about trying to do this every Monday morning, but right now it's just an idea. I'm not going to make any hard and fast commitments. Um, we'll just kind of see how it goes. Uh, perhaps one day this may even be a podcast, but it's going to be way down the road because I've got my hands full with the blog and the new book coming out. So, yeah, anyway, if I've said anything interesting to you, let me know. Uh, talk to you soon.